What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by. And today, we are going to be showcasing all three of the brand new exotic armor pieces added to Destiny 2 with Season of the Chosen. And you know what that means, ya boy has been furiously grinding on all three characters to get them high enough to take on the solo legend loss sector in only the second day of the season, spent enough time to get all three of the exotics, tested all three out, and then combined it all into one infotacular video. If that doesn't get you to subscribe, I don't know what will. Alright, now on to those exotics. Firstly, for anyone confused as to how to get these, you simply need to do a Legend or Master Lost Sector when the solo reward is chess pieces, because all three of these are chess pieces. There's a weird rumor going around that it has to be on the moon. The moon has introduced its Lost Sectors as potential candidates for Legend and Master when it rotates around daily but it doesn't have to be the moon. In fact, this one was the Cosmodrome. So simply wait and check every single day and see if the reward is chess pieces. And that's the time you want to go in and grind that loss sector. So the first one we're looking at is the Amanunculus for the Hunter. The perk is Beyond the Veil. You gain a second smoke bomb charge and have damage resistance while invisible. When you make an ally invisible, they gain damage resistance while invisible and you gain melee energy. So right off the bat, gaining a second smoke bomb as a bottom tree night stalker who's throwing smokes all the time to make themselves and likely the team invisible, that's already a legitimate endgame strategy for things like Grandmasters. So getting to double up on those smoke bombs, double up on the amount of invisibility you're able to dish out is very, very good. But then you have the whole damage resistance thing. Well, how much is it? We tested it in a private match and as you can see right here, I'm capable of hitting my opponent for 70 damage with the Hawkmoon, around 23 damage with this SMG, and then when they go invisible, also using this exotic, I hit for 63 damage with the Hawkmoon and 21 damage with the SMG. And that's going to work out to be around a 10% reduction in damage when you're invisible. So that's nothing insane. Like you are not going to be tanky when using this exotic. However, in some scenarios, it may take an extra shot to take you down. Or maybe you're going to resist something that otherwise would have killed you. But all of that is pretty straightforward. Where this exotic gets really quirky is the last part of its ability where you gain melee energy for making a teammate invisible, an ally invisible. So, as you can see right here, when I just throw my smoke bomb at my ally, turn them invisible, I get a huge chunk of melee energy. Pretty much 50% of a full charge of my smoke bomb, I just get back for doing that. And that's pretty insane. Not only that, as you can see here, it seems to increase the more allies I hit with that smoke bomb. So if I can turn two teammates invisible, I get a full charge of my smoke bomb back, which is actually insane. However, if I throw my smoke bomb on the ground to hit myself as well as nearby allies, which is a super common maneuver, you'll see that I get no melee energy back. So it really doesn't like you hitting yourself. You have to hit your teammate. Now, sometimes you can finagle it so that you're jumping over your teammate or you're running into the smoke bomb. As long as you hit your teammate first and trigger this first, and then you can maybe just barely get in on the end of that invisibility and turn yourself invisible, it will still give you the melee energy. But if you just plan to throw it again directly on the ground and make your whole team invisible, it will will not give you melee energy and that means the strategy for this exotic may end up being just two people with it going back and forth and turning each other invisible over and over again. But it's time to move on to the Kuros of the Falling Star for the Titan. This has the exotic perk Glorious Charge. 
greatly increase your Thunder Crash impact damage, gain an overshield that lasts longer the farther you travel before striking a target. So, seems pretty simple on a surface level, but again, this does have some very interesting quirks. Now, firstly, what everyone is thinking, how much damage are we talking about here? Well, as you can see by me absolutely yoinking some public event bosses, like this Ether Harvest guy is just alive and dead in the blink of an eye, as well as some wanted enemies within some lost sectors. And those guys are no joke. Remember, they are being insta-killed by this thing at full health, I don't have any unstable essence or anything like that. They're just deleted from the face of the earth. And you can actually see the comparison of me, you know, instantly killing it with a direct impact thunder crash and then taking the exotic off and hitting that guy again. And he's very much still alive. But that brings up kind of a very interesting question about this. When it says thunder crash impact damage, what is it talking about? Is it talking about literally the direct impact or is it talking about just the overall thunder crash damage itself? Well, tested that out, wanted to be sure, and it turns out that this increases your overall thunder crash damage. So you can see when I land right beside the lost sector boss, it does about half health. And then when I have my exotic chess piece on, do the same thing, land right beside him, it nearly kills him, which would indicate almost doubling the damage of Thunder Crash, which is pretty darn crazy. In fact, for a more accurate depiction of the damage numbers, let's take a look at this versus Kali in the Last Wish raid. So, I'm using Thunder Crash with the new chess piece, my teammate is using a Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun. Who does more damage? Well, as you can see, it's the Golden Gun, but not by a crazy amount more. And remember, Kali has a massive head crit, more than a lot of other bosses, which is definitely inflating the Golden Gun because I can't really get a crit with my Thunder Crash. And frankly, the fact that these damage numbers are even in the same ballpark speaks volumes to how much damage the Kuras of the Falling Star is dishing out. And if you're curious, I was hitting for a consistent 185,000 damage with it, and then I took it off and dropped all the way to about 106,000 damage. So it's adding on another 80,000 damage, which works out to be an approximate 75% increase. And I mean, 75% more damage from your super is nothing to scoff at. It's just that Thunder Crash isn't exactly meta, but, you know, one-shotting a bunch of pretty crazily tanky guys could actually make it a lot more meta, and definitely this is one of the more fun exotics to use. By the way, I never nose overshield, not even a single time, so I don't think that's really the reason you're using this thing. But moving on from there, we have the Mantle of Battle Harmony for the Warlock. This has the exotic perk, Absorption Cells. So takedowns with weapons that have a damage type matching your subclass element grant you super energy. While your super energy is full, you instead gain a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the type matching your subclass element. Now hold on just a dang minute, you're telling me you use just an elemental weapon that matches your subclass element and you get bonus super energy until you get your super and then you get bonus damage with those weapons. That sounds absolutely cracked and when most people saw this thing, they went, oh my goodness, this is gonna break the game. Well, does it? Let's take a look at how it actually works. So. If you are using, in this example, I'm using an arc subclass and then I'm using an arc weapon and then I get a kill on an enemy, I'm actually going to see a buff called energy siphon that appears in the corner of my screen and it lasts two seconds. If you get another kill within that two seconds, it simply resets the timer. And again, this is only for elemental weapons. If you use your kinetic, you don't see this buff. If you throw your grenade, use your melee, you don't see this buff. Now, once your super is fully charged, 
you're actually not gonna see anything. You do have to get a kill first, and then you're gonna get a new buff called Absorption Cells, and you get six seconds of this buff, which gives you a decent damage bonus of approximately 20%. But importantly, if these six seconds end, you're gonna have to get another kill to trigger Absorption Cells, it's pretty much like getting kill clip. But if you get more kills within these six seconds, it keeps extending the timer and then you can really pop off and essentially keep that 20% damage bonus as long as you want, as long as you're getting kills with those elemental weapons. Keep in mind that if you switch weapons, even if you switch weapons between, let's say, an arc energy weapon and an arc heavy weapon, you're gonna lose that bonus and you're gonna have to start again. And also, super importantly, this buff counts as a normal buff in the sense that if you have absorption cells going and then you go into a well of radiance or you go into a bubble, let's say, it's not gonna stack with that buff. Those buffs will replace the absorption cells buff simply because they're of a greater magnitude than 20%. So this is not gonna be the new DPS strat or anything like that because it's much more advantageous for your DPS to simply go into a bubble. But if you're playing solo or you're playing activities where you're not all huddling together for a damage phase, that damage bonus can be pretty nice. Of course, I think where everyone's thinking is PvP. However, when we tested it out, we couldn't trigger any of these things. Like you're gonna see, I'm getting kills, I'm doing everything I should be doing, I have a fully charged super or I don't, and I am not getting any of these buffs to pop out. So intentionally or otherwise, maybe it's just me, maybe it'll happen to you too, but we could not get, and it was multiple of us, could not get this thing to trigger in PvP, so keep that in mind. And I know that information may have some of you feeling down, but this should cheer you up. This actually stacks with Thresh. So let's say you're using a Solar subclass, then you put on, oh, I don't know, the Solar Europa auto rifle that can spawn with Thresh, and you are getting your super back really, really fast. And there are definitely some great PvE possible builds to just get your super back as fast as possible with this thing, and I'm very excited to try those out. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.